smart stuff from there. I, you know, the, I just, I just want to see game two. Let's go to picks and bands. Let's see how enemy keeps up if they continue on pressing with the momentum, oh. or if Eager turns things around and takes it away from them. One thing that we will see different. Eager going to go for first pick. Well, here's the thing as well. Eager need to win this game now to stay two games within touch of Envy at the top of the table because otherwise they're going to fall further behind because mm -hmm. Envy picked up that win today. It's an important moment at the moment for right. Eager. Enemy, however, across the way here, what they have the opportunity to do is they have the opportunity to take the spot above Denial again. They're now even again with Denial after that split that they got earlier on. Can they find a second win and put them safely into, I believe, its fifth position? Enemy going to ban out Giannis as a first step in that direction, trying to take over where Denial sits. Kepri banned out by Team Eager. They didn't like what Payne Devion had to say with that character, and it doesn't look it's like they want to play it themselves. So nope. Banned out of here. Last ban coming out. It'll be Hell by Enemy. So some Wukong available. Um, anything else I can really think of that you really want to see other than Sun Wukong? Not particularly. Maybe Hoi. <laughs> that was about it. <laughs> But I don't think Hoi is just as high as Sun Wukong yet in respect levels just yet. Sun Wukong so strong with Bluestone. Still so strong. I actually, I actually think Hoi is stronger on the order side of the map just because of the presence that he has in early game as well. Just to add to that. Early Zhang Kui pick here and Hoi coming out as well from enemy. So Zhang Kui got directly countered by the pick to Nemesis and it really didn't matter to Chaos. If it's not broke... Don't try and fix it. That's what enemy's going to do this game. They've picked almost. the same two cards. All right, almost. I know you're, you're it's transitioning. The same thing. Almost. Almost. Is, is, do, you, do you guys say that over, over in Europe? Yeah. All right. Because the, the American saying we usually hear, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, well, we invented the language, so I'll say what I want. <laughs> Thank you very much, F. <laughs> Nija, though, is going to get from and picked up early by Eager this time. I like this because it will take away Jean Kui from the game. When Jean, Jean Kui uses the recall demons, keep an eye on Dare to Care taking that guy to the sky, and then a Kraken's yeah. going to be waiting. When he lands. And there's follow-up. That's that's the thing that gets me. Naja does fantastic work by himself, but the follow-up will help. Smart pick coming out from enemy, though, by selecting Geb. So here, Naja, I mean, Naja doesn't want to attack the Guardian anyway, but in the situation that you do want to attack a Guardian, Geb is pretty much basically immune to crit. Well, the shield will really help out, because if Jean-Kui goes up in the sky, the moment he lands down from Nijar's ult, if you can get the shield off just sure. before the Kraken connects, it can help them survive the burst damage, which will detract from what Poseidon can bring to the table. Smart ban coming out from enemy. Athena going to be banned away from Team Eager, and we've seen Polar Bear Mike play a couple of different gods, right? But we really, have. Athena has been the the god for PBM. So it's by taking that off, to. it's going to force Polar Bear Mike into a character that he doesn't pick as often, which can definitely impact the game. And I like the call of Osiris banned out from Eager here as well. They don't want to see Salt Machine on that again. Yeah. They couldn't really make anything happen against him over in that solo lane. They tried a few times, but weren't that successful. Mm -hmm. So take that one away from his god pull, especially when Sun Wukong is locked in for potentially Omega here. Zupid. A Cupid pick for that man. Interesting. Zupid and Kumba oh. Karna. Oh. All right. So two uh, two spicy picks coming out from okay. Eager. I don't. I won't. I won't class them as spicy. But what this does do is lock down this team very heavily of enemy. There's two ways to take Junkui out of a fight now. There is the Nijar ultimate. Mm -hmm. There's the Kumba Karna ultimate. Both of these will remove that god for a while, which means he's not dealing damage with his ultimate. Right. On top of that, Fields of Love being underneath, waiting for the landing is potential disaster for that god. Yeah, I mean, the cripple just prevents. Once you land, you try to use all your movement abilities to get out of that problem, but if there's a Fields of Love waiting for you at the bottom, exactly. you're crippled out. And then you've got a Bastet that's going to want to pounce into engagements, deal damage, pounce out again. Issue is, if you put the cripple field down on them, mm. you ain't going nowhere. Got to deal with the Whirlpool, got to deal with the Fields of Love. I like the composition from Eager here. It's, it's very strong. It's one of my personal favorite lane compositions, the Kumba Karna and the, and the Cupid, which it's funny because I don't traditionally care for Cupid too much. I think he's, but I think his strengths come in very specific situations, and this is one of them because of the cripple and all the effects that knock up. At but the same time, I don't know what the matchup is between Ho Yi and Cupid for the most part. I suspect Cupid, if he can land the heart bomb and mm -hmm. the Ho Yi misplays in terms of leaping away at the wrong time and stuns in midair, he'll fall out of the sky. Of course. And um, there's a little bit of opportunity, plus, obviously, you can use the Fields of Love to stop the leap escapes. Um, but then when it comes to trading damage, I'm pretty sure it's relatively even, if not slightly, in favor of Ho Yi. Most likely. Uh, very interesting. We'll, we'll just have to see it play out in the lane. One of the things that I like, I mentioned Polar Bear Mike and Zapman 
or more specifically, Kumba Karna and Cupid being my favorite lane. I, I love. I, I will never get tired of seeing the heart grenade. It's always you. You what you do is, is you you hit the yeah. heart bomb on the front minion, and then Kumba Karna knocks that minion backwards into the opponent, and they get hit by the heart bomb. It's one of my favorite interactions with two gods, and we're definitely going to be see it. We're definitely going to see it in place here for Team E. Well, we'll see if they can pull it off because it's not an easy task to master. There's a lot of communication that goes into it, and to be fair, for the most part, you don't necessarily try and like communicate it because you're in a competitive level there's more mm -hmm. important things to talk about than like you ready ready three two one go because you're probably <laughs> getting ganked on this fight's going on the side of the map so it'll just be down to both of them realizing they have the opportunity to do it but look at the early wave clear that ho you'll have in the jungle he's already cleared out both buff buffs nice and quickly but as did cupid and kumbakana to be fair they're gab mm -hmm. one of the weaker ones so ho yi's clear not as strong dare to care laz is going to combine for the right hand harpy is relatively easy and early on Looks like Zapman and Kumba have sort of the push. Laz and Dare to Care want to at least look at these Harpies. They wanted to contest, slow. but Chaos made the right call and rotated straight to the left-hand Harpies before Adjust was even there and started work on them. Right. So by the time the boys of Eager tried to swing in, they were already dead. It was good decision-making from Chaos just to go for that. We see it now and again out of some teams, and it's just the recognition that the, the, there's an opportunity there. Geb starting off with rank 1 beams. It's an interesting approach for me. Geb generally... Oh, it's, it's just smart against this lane matchup. Heart bomb hits you into a stun, into a root, into a yawn. You're CC'd for days in that lane. <laughs> There's no way of escaping. Take a look out. Fields of Love comes online. You can't even roll out. That's the key there. I, I think that a lot of what a lot of what you just mentioned could sort of be alleviated by a self uh, a self shield or whatnot. Uh, you know, you get stunned, but you can deal with it. But I think the key there is avoiding the Fields of Love. That you can't escape. You can't, even if you shield yourself, you're still going to get stunned if you preemptively do it. Of course. On the heart bomb. The root, yeah, you can do that, but you're really going to cleanse the root because then the yawn's going to come through, and that's going to keep your root in place until you get hit again. And then, obviously, the Fields of Love, and then still the Kumbakana uppercut as well, which will cause an issue. But at the same time, beads and that is kind of difficult nowadays. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely... I, I like beads on the support. It's just interesting to see it picked up this early. Zatman's build as well, a little bit aggressive. Oh, you can see he's probably going to go for the Transcendence build here. Oh, so yeah. he only started with one health potion in this lane and has to rely on Share the Love to give those hit hearts over to Kumbakana to sustain him up. Just going to be very careful about mana usage is the biggest issue there. Until the Transcendence comes comes up. Of course, Transcendence brings a lot of mana along with the power that it provides. And Cupid, being largely an ability-based hunter, is going to make good use of oh, not just big that. Kraken. But he's going to follow up. Trouble and big cracking out of Eager, but Enemy is actually the one that wind up not just with first two. blood, but second blood. Two for the money goes the way of a just two kills on a best set at two minutes. That's a scary now sight. Now, if you look at the boots that just got bought by Lassus when he was dead there, they're tier two boots right now. Didn't have any penetration online with this build. They look for the big play at the five minute mark, or sorry, at the five level mark straight away. Big ultimate combo came out from them, but jean Kui got his ultimate off early enough. That gave him the extra protections to survive. I just got hit up too, but he managed to get through it. And then the turnaround was like, well, our burst is all gone. What do we have left? Yep. Nothing. An envy. So the enemy turned it around. <laughs> I keep getting them wrong today. They played really well game one, but they're not number one, all right? Well, then maybe they're on their way there, though. They can still make worlds right now. Very true. Performances like this, like game one of this one, they have a shot. I mean, jokes aside, if we jokes oh, aside, oh, this play, this play is good. This is well, a fantastic little play. Salt machine is going to be pushed aside. Down comes. Oh, oh, he lived. No, nothing to bounce that ring off of. Ooh, that was lucky. As it just on the left hand side does find Zatman. There's not a lot we could see come out of Polo Bear Mike to defend there either. Just a enemy. Enemy looking like a different team. Well, they've got the they've got the excitement of winning that first game, right? They've dominated that first game, played it very, very well. But this time round, adjust on this Bastet is actually making an impact. Exactly. We, did, we didn't say adjust virtually at all last no, time we round. Didn't. But, but you I know, was worried Hindu, about that. You know, Hindu. Uh, earlier, you said enemy was was doing well earlier in the season. That's why you didn't agree with me when I said all year. But mm -hmm. for me, those wins were. If you go back and actually look at the tape, a lot of them enemy. Enemy played well, but not as well as we're seeing here. Well, I want to say that was one of their quickest games of the season as well, because it, generally they go quite late to the boys. That's what I'm saying. We see the, we see these long, laborious engagements, and and they have to work. They had to work really hard even earlier in the season when they were winning. I mean, they started off the split seven and two. That's true. They looked fantastic, and then everything went downhill from there. But the gameplay specifically, if you watch the plays, 
enemy in this last game, this is this is a different level. It's, we're seeing different stuff, and you know, it's it's all good play come off of like you know misplays from the enemy team, but it's not eager just dropping the ball. No, not at all. I don't think he even really dropped the ball in either of these games. So exactly, far, that's fair. what I'm saying. It's it, it's just it's very interesting and. Honestly, largely exciting to see enemy really doing what they're doing here. And one thing I want to mention again, go back to it. Just last game we mentioned the Bastet, and I said early game focus, lots of pressure, lots of uh -huh. ganking. Didn't really perform to what I expected in Nothing terms of ganking. Happened. But it was fine because the rest of the team still got to the late game anyway. Right. Things worked out. This game, though, he's setting themselves up really big. Really big. 3-0 already on this Bastet. Your bow gets online early, 100% scaling, which we mentioned. It could do a lot. Vichium, two oh. large circle ults out of our Bastet. two hunters. Zatman puts out his first, but this time the difference is there's a jungler here as well. Vichium finishes off Zatman with a basic to secure the fourth kill on the side of enemy. Dares here, yeah, though. gets a sash, gets the ult. One shot, two shot, and Kraken. three shot, but waiting at the bottom is the Perfect. Kraken. Lazes gets his team on the board off of the assist of Dare to Care. Yawn doesn't connect though, but on the si right side, Salt Machine solos Omega 1v1, but this fight's still continuing. Chaos turns up with the ghosts, and he's going to run down at least one member. Dare to care, going to fall. Enemy still take it. And right there, I, 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 like that, I like that decision. Enemy take what they get, and they look, they look at what's going on. Not... Not willing to dive the tower just yet. No, it's not, it's not worth it. It's too early in the game to try and dive. <laughs> Way too early. They are trying to steal away the red buff, though, on this left-hand side here. And the good knock-up from Pain Devion is fine. He's nice going to get away from the heart bomb, which was very important. Teleport coming in from Omega to mid lane. Maybe they're trying to make something happen, but they're already out our enemy. I don't know what happened in Solo, though, because we did see that pickup of yep. Omega. Yeah, uh, Soul Machine just got him. 1v1. Just got him. Don't know what happened. It's, it's, it's a strange one because, obviously, the, you know, the Sun Wukong ultimate, you can get out of dodge for the most part. Mm -hmm. Small mistake over there, I guess, in the 1v1, yeah. or just a very good play from Salt Machine. I mean, Omega's ultimate's down, so it was used up in the air. Down That's on the nice ground, combo. Pain to be on into the coffin. Dare to care. Picks up the second kill for his team. Support has to walk out of there, but the rest of the team will stick around. Enemy now looking to make oh, waves pounce. onto Laz's. Puts them low, but not low enough. Dare to care, dare to care still here. A little bit of credit there to Dare to Care as well, because that sash that landed straight after the Kumbakana ultimate, the epic uppercut, mm -hmm. was straight on to Pendy the moment in. Pouncing once again. Ooh, that D claw connected with Lasses. The bleed's gonna hit him. Lasses is dead. Lasses down. Adjust with another kill. Four in total for the jungler. Well, the small thing as well, Kumbakana very, very strong against Bastet in terms of the cats as well. You can root them out and keep them in position for two seconds, and the yawn also impacts them as well. So put the kitty cats to sleep if you can. Kumba Karna definitely uh, has a little bit of an impact, I'm so, glad he's back. so to speak. I'm so glad he's back. You look so happy. He was my first diamond, and I was like, this I guy know. is ridiculously strong, and some people still don't recognize it. Very you, effective against you and, certain compositions. You and Durgius, the two big fans uh, of, of Kumba Karna, really. <laughs> There's been a few of us now and again. Payne didn't mind it now and again. Payne DeVion used it once or twice. Zatman oh, with Zat a really one. important stun takes the window. He's got a backup coming go now. Blink in from Kumba Karna. There you go. It'll knock up Pain to be on. Nice waiting prince. at the bottom. Oh, Root. Is he get out? Vichium Sons pushes Zapman out of the conversation. Uh -oh. And Dare to Care and Polar Bear Mike can't continue the fight by Ricochet. themselves. Ricochet connects. That was fantastic. But Polar Bear Mike juking backwards and forwards. The Sleepy Giant will get away for now. Did he use beads? I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to work out. This is why I'm so <laughs> quiet, because I'm just trying to work out how the hell Payne de Vion got out of that situation when he got sashed the moment he landed. But he got the cataclysm off, which turned that completely on its oh, head. Yeah. Lasses could try and defend the Govier here, Kraken boys. Nope, He's they recognized it too late. Ward is right there, and Lasses walks He's over it. Feel the love is going to help him out, but Lazarus can't heal if he can't reach it. Kraken comes out just as he falls, but it's not enough to really impact enemy, and they're going to start the Gold Fury up one more time. They have to defend the Gold Fury. Zatman should have choose between farming here or going to defend the Gold Fury, but luckily, good reinforcements yeah. are here. I do like on the right hand side, though, we saw the teleport come out from Salt Machine to the duo lane to support, and what Omega just did there was I believe he went and stole away that speed buff. Looks like it. Yep, still yep. on the ground. He was, he was over there doing the speed, so he managed to steal that one away for his team, which it means he's doing work over in that lane, even though he didn't see a rotation out of him, which is very, right. very important. And that'll help him out, especially because, you know, he died in that 1v1. So getting a bit of golden experience lead back again should just weather the storm there for the most part. Omega going to go help out Dare Care take out his own speed buff and hurry up back to lane. He doesn't want to lose too much to the tower. 
The salt machine pushes the wave and, and goes ahead and puts that there for him. Small issues on the side of Eager though, because enemies line up here. The kills are on the correct gods for the stage of the game that they've been looking for. Jean Cui being involved in five kills already, two of those actual confirmed and three assists. Very important adjust on this Bastet, able to get a full, well, base build online, I want to say, with the Jotuns. Very important to get some early game damage off. And then the longer this game goes on, well, then you can start looking towards Vicium and Salt Machine. Adjusted Vicium combined for a kill on a Zapman in the long lane very quickly. I mean, one minute Cupid was there, the next he's just not. And that's a window for enemy to go ahead and start the Gold Fury. Gold Fury already down to 50% HP before Eager even thinks about making the rotation. Derek here comes on in, and it's enough to send a couple of people packing. I think Dare's dead. Dare is dead. He's got no escape route from this one. Now Cataclysm is going to follow up into another knock on Pain Divion. Was perfect with that chaos. Picking up the kill with the Exorcism. Lazar's waiting for the rotation. If the, if enemy comes around the corner, he was willing to go in. But once he saw how many people on enemy were coming around the corner, he quickly turned tail. A little bit of isolation coming out from Eager here. They're getting picked off one by one. Not because necessarily they're out of position, but because there's no rotations coming in. And they've not got support of their team. Whereas enemy, they've always got back up with them at the moment. And Chaos still has his ultimate. He's been hanging on to it. These small individual fights aren't really the situation where you want to unleash the ghosts. You want to save those for these big parties. I've only really seen him use it when the Kraken's being used. Because you couldn't get here just beforehand. If he pops it, gives himself those extra protections. protections just for a second. Survive the Kraken, deal damage back, and potentially heal back up with the Exorcism. Smart smart stuff for the Chaos. I, I want to see him pull the trigger and see how... Uh, how much it'll impact things. I mean, damage-wise at the moment, it's not going to be too bad for himself. He's 303. He should be working on, I guess he's on a Warlock Sash is where he's going to go here. Could still choose Ethereal, though, which is an option we've seen quite a lot of times just because you don't have to worry about gaining those stacks. But for 12 minutes in, getting a Warlock Sash online, you'll get him yeah, easy. Warlock Sash is the way to go here. E-Staff is generally sort of the, uh, it's Warlock Sash light. It's when you're a little too late to build these stacks up, we usually see that built later on or on a player that's very, very far behind or on a character that uh, winds himself in the jungle. We see that a lot of jungle Ymir's going Pressure again on Zapman Pain, even just hanging in the wings here once again. And Vishim has a part just though, which rotate over here and looks like Polar Bear Mike's going to say hello. Doesn't find the route though, so it just gets out of danger. Uppercut used by Mike, they're looking for the all on Geb instead. Pain to be on, half HP or less. Able to roll out even with they don't the find heart him. bomb. That was three ults. Mike is going to be safe. A just is going to find this kill now. Pounces in onto Dare to Care. Finally, the cats are going to chase now onto Zapman as well. Mike is going to use the yawn, but already the ricochet connects with Zapman, forcing him away. Lassis is over here as well to dissuade the situation for the most part. But this is really good work. Right hand side though, what's going on over there? Because Sun Wukong is beating down a tower and Omega is doing good work there. Actually, no, what? Hang on. What, what is Salt Machine doing? That's what I got confused about. He's just. Oh, okay. I was like, is there a fight going on over there? No, <laughs> he's just proxying. As we go back to the fight, Chaos now finds Lassies. There's the ghost you were talking about being popped. Polar Bear Mike, one hit from death, will survive. Just barely. But it's enough to keep him alive for just another moment. Koopa Karna, still zero deaths. But again, enemy will start the Gold Fury. And this time, I don't really think anybody can have anything to say about it. Already down to 25% HP. This Gold Fury is free. And enemy going to extend their already large lead even more so. Let's take a look at the graphs, ladies and gentlemen. 12 to 2, read the kills, and the gold say the same thing. It's 4, becoming... 500 oh, gold. gosh. This is becoming a runaway train, and enemy are definitely driving C for this one. Pain to be on. A little bit of pressure there, but Dare to Care and Zatman, they can't really put out too much on their own. They've got to be careful of the rest of the enemies being around them as well. But like I said, Runaway Train is the big key here. We saw that engagement there was a lot committed by Eager to try and pick up the kill on Pain de Vion. The uppercut was used, then the sash was used, um, as well as the Fields of Love was used. Yep. And then we also saw the ult come out from Dare to Care, which was used, and they still didn't find the pick on the support. After all that goes down, well, what are you going to do? to try and deal with the aggression that's going to come back out from the rest of the team. Zapman versus Vichia matchup here in the long lane. Characters are even as far as levels are concerned, but separated by about 500 gold. Vichia on the better side of that one. Most of that's the gold fury and the kills as well. It's, it's one kill and the gold fury will pretty much put you around that sort of situation for the most part. But for 15 minutes in, we need Eager to play. For Eager's game plan now is hold. Let's not bleed anymore. The next Gold Fury can attempt to contest. Let's just farm up as much as we can, not lose any jungle. So 
clear up wherever we can in terms of goal, you know, putting wards down so they can't invade. We need to farm. It's still only 15 minutes in. It's not over just yet, but it's going to be an uphill battle. Of course. I mean, yeah, but by no means is the game over. There's a lot of smite to be played, but you also have to remember that, you know, just how enemy won game number one, and that's got to be in the minds of these players, and to continue this ball rolling, and this time, they have a player that wasn't really doing much last game, really running things. He is, and four just is, just. But what he's done is just babysat duo lane all day and put the pressure on. They don't want to allow Cupid and Kumbakana to try and wreck through this lane. We mentioned about all the upsides of Kumbakana Cupid together against the Geb Ho Yi. Mm -hmm. And they're like, all right, you want to run that? Adjust, come sit in my lane for me. Put up a tent. I'm going to sit here all day. And then find the kills time and time again. And Zapman is being forced off Golden Experience multiple times because of it. I'm being forced to play very, very safe for the most part. Knock up out of pain. Looking for more, but not going to find it as Bastet jumps right back over the wall. Pull up here, Mike. He has expended. That was a blink out of... Who blinked? Oh, it was Poseidon. Had to get himself out of a bit of position. But look at this. Buff is being invaded once again. The red is going to fall down on the side. Enemy steal that one away once more. I said Eager tried need to try and position themselves and not give too much away. Will enemy are doing the right enemy, thing and not letting them? Enemy getting aggressive. Dare to care. Take it out before he could even think about doing something. Back, PBM. He's going to fall as well. An enemy surprise Eager underneath their own tower. A couple of blinks and cataclysms, and all of a sudden, there's nobody left because enemy has already wiped the floor nope. with them. And you Continuing can see Omega. Continuing to tier two, enemies just being aggressive. And Omega's just looking to spit push to get a tier two there on the right, which isn't a bad call. Zatman needs to catch up in farming, get some items going, so I understand why he's staying there. But Lassis has to give up the tier two in mid lane here. There's nothing he can do against that many members of enemy, so I'm very, I understand completely why he was so far back and not trying to make some sort of crazy bonkers play. Omega, proxy farms a single wave. They get a tier right tower back. on the left. Sorry, tier one tower on the left. They get a tier one tower on the right. But I don't think it's going to detract to the amount of map presence they lost in the mid area of this map. Laz is hanging around around the Gold Fury. Still in the middle lane. But here comes a bunch of members of enemy. A good whirlpool will deter. The enemy will go back into their own jungle. Really rough situation for Egan. Now, I said they had to make sure they just don't give up too much more and hold on. Enemy are doing the right thing, though. 100%. They're looking to group up, put the pressure on with the advantage they've got. Now, Zatman's under pressure. A little bit overexcited by a just there. He won't find the kill on Zatman, but he may get punished. Interesting Shield. play out of Dare to Carry. Takes him out of Fields of Love, but no harm, no foul. Laz is still able to clear up the kill onto a just. So the cat falls down for about 45 seconds. She'll be out. She'll eventually come back. And that's a good look for Dare to Care, being as he's four levels behind. Enemy has paid a lot of attention to the jungler. One, five, and two on the character that Dare to Care played very well. Game game one, I said it was going to come down to the junglers, and he didn't really look too much to do with the junglers that game. But this game is a bit of a better reflection of what I expected out of this two. Whichever one goes off, for the most part, it appears both of them got the gods they wanted to. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, it's a just that has made the bigger impact. Nija, let's be honest, Picked up in this situation really to take people out of fights, not necessarily to secure kills, but to take people out of fights and set up for his team. Alongside Kumbakana too, looking to do the same sort of thing. Problem is, is that Eager haven't had the opportunity as clean as they'd like to, because enemy are the ones that have been getting the kills too early before they could find the initiation themselves. Kumba here going to join up with Zatman. Let's get a back. No, no it was a surprise. fake back blink. That was nice. So that's going to get Vishium a little bit surprised. Vishium. Did not panic at all then. A lot of people who get yawned on immediately will beads. And that's what you'll be seeing looking from Polar Bear Mike. He'll be looking for him to bead so he can immediately use the epic uppercut in response. Because the beads are very short on, on one second. So Vishim didn't panic at all. He knew that he would be able to leap away the moment the yawn ended. And if he, even if he got ulted, there was going to be not much follow-up. Omega's here to look at Gold Fury, which is at 50% HP. Omega's Jumping the one that can stand against adjust. the adjust here. That's Try the big key. Omega at a distance. And adjust isn't here comes it. the Kraken. It's enough to get Gold Fury, it looks like. It did. Gold Fury goes in the way of Eager. Lassis does fall down for his punishment of stealing it away, though. And maybe enemy will continue the chase here. Ricochet doesn't connect. They're going to keep going for it, though, Hindu. Salt Machine chasing Omega, but just a little bit too far. I apologize. And if we take a look, can we take a look at the graphs real quick? And there you go. Look, it looked like the Kraken was enough I to secure, it was but still goes the way of enemy and just pushes them further 
into the lead. Almost 7,000 gold. Two Gold Furies in a row in favor of enemy now. And now they're going to be able to push down onto the left-hand side, looking for the pressure onto Zatman once again. Good job from Polybar Mike. Dirty Cares here, but immediately leap in the way is Vishim to make sure the ring doesn't go in. There's a reinitiation. Triple stun out of the support. Knocked up in the air. Chaos is going to be fine. Dare to care, though. Yeah, he'll be all right as well. Keep it on the jungle to see who's rotating. Sun Wukong is there. Omega around adjust two. Adjust gonna look to try and reach around the back and find a pick if he can. But by doing that, Omega's called it out, and that means the enemy you're gonna get a tier one tower because eager have to recall. Adjust trying to invade the jungle. Does so successfully, not punished too hard for it. Gets hit by a magic cudgel out of Omega, but that's really it. Meanwhile, right hand side, let's visit the solo lane. Tower, very gonna very fall. strange situation this one in the solo lane because we saw Omega did get the tier one tower. Oh, not even go for the tower. They were both, they were both proxy farming each other for the yep. most part. Um, and Sobushi can find that kill that we, we didn't catch on camera. And since then, well, it's just been a, a, a free farm situation. Well, Sobushi go for the tower now. He's likely not going to finish it off. No, he will. Just a matter of how much will he pay for it. Stunned out. I don't think he'll Salt get killed here. Oh, hang on, you're right. Basics. Rotation. Here's the rotation out of Eager. Well aware, Salt Machine is here, they're cracking. Didn't just connect then, even just the yawn. Miss. So Salt Machine bravely runs away to live to fight another day. Wow, big rotation out of Eager, still not able to connect with the solo laner. Different story here in the left hand side. Vishium stuck in the cove. Deleted. Fields of love into the ultimate, into the heart bomb. That's gonna be curtains for Vishium. Yeah, but now look who's stuck in the pit. Dare to cares in a world of trouble. That man's gonna get chased down by ghosts. And a kitty cat as well. Assault Machine does bring down Dare to Care as well. So a two for one trade to pick up the Hunter didn't work out as well. And I think this is the, the story of this game for me is Eager haven't managed to get their combos together. They've not managed to synergize as well as they would have liked to in this game. Right. And enemy are punishing them for it by basically finding the picks that Eager aren't. Coming down the mid lane. Looks like a Enemy Phoenix looking now. for Phoenix. Two members of Eager still dead. The Cats will help. The that backdoor protection good. blinking in his PBM, trying to play the aggressive defense that Eager did last time. Dare to Care will be up in just a matter of seconds. An enemy not finding the opportunity that they sought will slink back into the jungle. Tried to go for a cheeky one because they've got plenty of penetration on adjust here as well with exactly. that build. So those kitty cats will be able to tank it up for him, remove the backdoor protection like you said, but better play from Polar Bear Mike to yawn on them. And Salt Machine needs to be a little bit careful here. Gonna take a little bit of poke damage, but hang on on the right hand side there. Omega's in a will to hurt. A lot of damage coming out and Omega already forced out into that ultimate. With that Zed enemy, they're the ones retreating. But what, of course you're going to retreat because you've got to deal with the... You're on their side of the map. Take that into account. They're going to get speed buff dead to care. He's going to pick that one up. Nice little poke from Lassus again. But enemy still controlling the game for the most part here. You can see... You knew that already, but hey. Enemy still here in the opponent's jungle. Cleaning out the ward. Polar Bear Mike are going to yawn. Get pain to beyond. Not enough follow-up from Vishium and friends to really turn that into anything. Polar Bear's going to be a little bit careful now about these throwbacks that he's using time and time again to get himself into the engagements because it is Kumba Connor's only escape. Yes, it allows him to gap close, but if the, if the team realizes that that's what he's going to do time and time again, enemy, they can wait for him to throw back, avoid the yawn if possible, and commit to killing the Kumba Connor if they realize the team of Eager are not going to follow him up in time. Eager, they, they haven't really done much of that at all. They only have four kills on the scoreboard, Hindu man. I mean, they have just not been able to really find what they're looking for. When they found a combo together between the gods, it's worked out well. But then now and again, they've ended up hitting the likes of Pain Divion on a Geb, which isn't the target you're really looking for to try and kill. You don't find it, it ends up going in enemy's favor. All your ultimates down, what else can you do? Polar Bear might be in a bit of trouble here. Nah, just some poke. I get healed up, but look at this. Left-hand side, blinking for Pain Divion. Cataclysm forces beads on two members there. Lass is under full pressure there. Kraken's the kitties away. Smart but the main play cat is still there. Of, smart play coming out of a just. Moving to the left to avoid the center of the Kraken, which provides the stun knockup. By doing that, he was able to stay uncc'd and secure the kill with the just, with the jump, excuse me, onto the mid laner Lazes. Now continuing down the right hand side is enemy. There's three members here from Eager, but there's five in red with enemy colors on board. They have a wave of minions as well, Hindu. Looks like enemy want to get aggressive. Well, there we go. Aggressive comes from Eager too. Blink yawn to try and zone them out. But look at Submachine in the back forcing Zapman away. That's one of their major damage dealers. I would dare to care. Doesn't have ultimate being forced away as well. Adjust. Making sure they stay away as Vishian brings down the tier two.
perfect understanding of the role. Salt Machine with the flank and pushes the enemy away, providing space for his team. Objective-minded Hunter taking, da taking down the tower. Very smart role understanding coming out of enemy. And after they get the tower, they're going to go for the Fire Giant. This, though, Eager can contest this. In combo, we trust is the call from the Eager fans at home right now, but he throwbacks, gets bled, yawns. Omega's here as well, but the Fire Giant is getting 50%. very low. 50% on the Fire Giant. Cats used on Avicium. Omega, up in fire the Fire Giant reset. And this might be a better fight for Ego. As you can see, the ultimate used from Dead to get Polybear. Mike is going to fall dead. in his passive. Good damage onto Chaos, but Chaos survives and just picks up the kill on Dare. Dare and PBM are dead. Omega is at back at base. Lazis and Zapman, the only ones alive. This Fire Giant is going to be basically free. Really no one around to take care of it. Glasses is here, has the Kraken available, looking Glasses for the steal. Trust. He's just a hair too late. He's going to miss it one more time, and he's going to get pounced on quite literally for the 21st kill wow. on enemy. Surrender. And with that fire giant, it's going to secure the win for enemy as Lazis and crew on Eager decide to press the F6. I, I completely agree with the F6 there. It was almost insurmountable to come back from. The composition Eager had was fantastic, but they didn't manage to get it synergizing as well as they would like to have. Enemy, amazing performance. Both sets yeah. today, um, sorry, both games today, I should say. But NA overall right now, I don't want to I don't want to <laughs> know who's going to win land now because at first I was like, yeah, it's Envy, but it's not. I mean... North America has just been, there has been so much competition. Honestly, it's it's just tough and difficult to really figure out who is really on top these days. It's a rough ask because, let's be honest, the meta changes so frequently in Smite <laughs> and patches roll out that sometimes swings and roundabouts happen and you end up on the losing end. I mean, let's just talk about this game specifically. We've got First Blood coming at you live. It's going to be a just here. Started things off as the cat. And this was the aggression that you saw. The Kraken came out, immediately hit in five, but just survived it. And then they managed to turn that one around. Chaos with the ultimate as well. There just wasn't enough damage from the Kraken to secure a kill, which is what they were looking for. You could see that we mentioned it just after Lassis died. He went and bought tier two boots. No penetration early on. It's very difficult to find a Kraken on a 100% yeah. target. Yeah, it was just about the reinitiation. and It was very uh, good. Yeah, and it just really turned things around uh, this time. First game, not so much impact. Second game, tons of it. We'll take a look at how Alpha Draft really ranks him amongst his peers. And right there, adjust on top. The jungler making a swing and winding up Oz number one. Jungler, like you want him to be, on. you can't see him. He just kills you. <laughs> that's, that's what you want from your jungler, an invisible, invisible just dude. Just a cat lurking in the shadows. Exactly. Just turns up, gets the kills, and like, all right, boy, see you later. <laughs> Fantastic Ooh. stuff, and we're gonna take a we're gonna take a different approach here. Uh, just a play of the game. We'll take a look at a one v one situation taking place in the solo lane. Well, I think it's also because we didn't see this, so I'm very excited myself to watch it. So let's find out exactly what happened. So Omega Look had just used some cloud there. I'm guessing Eagles Rally was available. What, uh, what a turnaround! That's... And this is actually this is the second time that we saw that exact uh, sort of uh, bait come out. We saw the back. And then all of a sudden, a blink into aggression out of enemy in the long lane, out of the support player. And this time around, we saw it out of Assault Machine here. So a little bit of trickery coming out. Fantastic play of the game. And of course, we're going to follow up that with a player of the game. And that's going to be the cat. Just 12, 1, and 6. And what a great performance. He, like I said, he sat in dual lane for most of the day, and that's what he needed to do to get the win. Doesn't matter if you call it camping or whatever. Hey, the guy got the scoreline, and he pressured the correct targets and kept them pinned down. Great work from Adjust, supporting Bishim, and allowing the rest of the team to just do what they want on the rest of the map, too. I liked how enemy really shared the responsibility in this set. I mean, first game was, it was the Vishim show. There really wasn't, it you was. know, everybody helped out, but Vishim really just carried the flag. And this time around, everything was about the free line. It was all Adjust coming out on this fast set. And the best thing is, enemy is coming into this game today. Enemy weren't necessarily in a great position. We weren't sitting there going, oh, enemies, you know, they're on the up. They were kind of just cons consistent and surviving. You right. know? Eager, the other hand, Eager came in, big win over Envy, and now enemy. Two big wins over Eager. And, uh, Crazy. At the helm of the team, really, is Payne de Viana. He's going to be on the line here as well. Congratulations on your two wins above the number two team. Uh, how do you feel, man? Uh, I feel 
kind of uh, tired as hell. Like I've been having a, a rough sleep schedule, and then these two games were pretty rough. I uh, made a bunch of dumb calls during the games, a bunch of uh, dumb mistakes, but uh, in the end, we uh, pulled the victory. So I'm right. happy. Yeah, I, I mean the victory, and the victory came out largely from your teammates. I mean, sure, you 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 played fine. There really wasn't a downside. But talk to me about how much of an impact it's been, and how much fun it's been to play with this specific roster of guys. Oh, it's been uh, obviously a totally different story to when I played with uh, the old roster with uh, Dior Pernicus and and Co. Um, and on this one, obviously, I'm the shot caller, and uh, uh, I make most of the decisions when it comes to team fights. Um, but the dynamic is totally different because uh, I'm mainly the one talking nonstop, mm -hmm. and uh, the rest of my teammates every now and then pop with little comments such as uh, "I'm on this guy" or uh, "I'm gonna go for a gank there" or something. Right. So uh, it's definitely more of a uh, of a solo, uh, I'd say, um, experience more than with the Pernicus, where is where it was me and Pernicus more more or less calling uh, every single shot. So, so you actually you, you get to be uh, the, the captain. And one one question that I have for you is how your team has really succeeded. We saw tremendous success for enemy very early on in the season. And then once you reached nine games, pretty much a, not much at all. And then you came into this game looking like the team we saw in the first couple of weeks. It, was there anything different happening in the middle of the season or is this just sort of luck of the draw? Well, I think when we played C9 and TSM2, I think uh, we started our games really strong in early phase. And then we eventually like either throw a fight or we lose the the, the fight of a comp right um and that shows uh basically our experience versus like denial we scrim them non-stop and well most of the time and uh with denial they're really good early game but we never really make it to the late part of the game where we practice that the, the the late phase fights and sieging so i think it shows in our te like team plays overall uh early game we're really really strong and then eventually when it comes to late game we make like a dumb mistake where <laughs> we don't properly bait fire giant or we go into an odd situation where somebody gets picked and then we try to save them and then we lose two more guys and then they, suddenly they win the game. Um, so I think it just showed. Uh, and some of these games against C9 and TSM felt like we probably should have won them, but we ended up not because we throw or like <laughs> make a massive misplay. So it's just really making funny, the though. adjustments, yeah. It's really funny because you guys, I believe, have the longest in terms of um, length of games in the SPL right now. You guys seem to take the making people go the distance a lot of the time. I think we just don't close them. Like I think we're we're just I don't know. I, we managed today to like do a pretty good job, I think. But these these other set uh, these other sets, I think they're fairly pathetic from us, unfortunately. Well, you look very good today, and <laughs> you know, full credit to you. That was a really dominant performance. Yeah, well, fair. thank you very much, and hopefully uh, we can keep it going. Exactly, uh, and you know, I wish you good luck, my friend. And uh, do you have anything else to say to anybody at home or elsewhere? Oh, shout outs to uh, all my teammates for playing so well today, despite the lack of practice with Salt uh, because of his school stuff. And uh, thanks to our substitute for uh, being uh, such a uh, available and uh, competent player. And uh, yeah. Fantastic. Well, once again, thank you so much to the captain of Enemy, Payne de Viard. Of course, uh, Payne de Viard and co. Just too owed eager. Fantastic stuff. And again, uh, maybe th this one might have thrown you for a loop if you're playing on Alpha Draft. You might not have predicted these players doing so well, but you can get your picks in for the rest of the weekend. AlphaDraft.com. Win real money by putting your esports knowledge to the test. Go ahead and see if you can figure out which players are going to be the top of the top for each day. And if you do so correctly, you might be able to line your pockets. I would not have called these North American games today. That's for sure. <laughs> I'd have lost plenty. Not in the slightest. I mean, that just got thrown for a loop here in North America. For sure. Over in Europe, maybe a little bit more predictable. Very predictable, to be <laughs> fair, for EU. But let's have a look at the NA standings here and see how this shakes things up now that we've seen both Envy tie up with Denial in that split and Eager. Well, they fell 0-2 to the boys of Enemy, who've now find themselves two games above Cognitive and Denial. Yeah, it's going to split up three games between number one and number two, so maybe what Weekend said earlier today might ring true. Weekend being very confident that him and his team will stay number one. Denial? Well, they are number I think that's confirmed them for number one, because they've both only got two, one, two games left, oh. and nobody can catch them, so there you go, Weekend. <laughs>
inside Bucky's knowledge there, it looks like. But hey, it worked out. Yeah, we can definitely understand things. Of course, this is Saturday, which means you've got one more day left in week number nine. And we'll take a look at it right now. It's going to be Paradigm versus Fnatic starting off the afternoon tomorrow at 1 p.m. That is going to be our game of the week. And there's so many implications for it. So many implications. The top team from that. So to be fair, the one that wins that will probably be the one that secure second position for the most part. That'll be my pick for Worlds too. To yeah. that, whoever wins that will probably be my pick for Worlds. I'm going to say that now. Unless wow. they split and then I'm like, I ain't got a clue. <laughs> no clue. <laughs> so, not quite free FP. A couple of other games coming your way as well. Most notably, I guess you could look at Team Solomade versus Cloud9 as well. Gosh, Another game that has a lot of implications for Tasty. the standings and how they look. So, that one should be exciting as well. Really fantastic stuff. And with that as well, take into account that this week we do have the new release of the new war skin, the space, what's she called? Space something? New Horizons. You can go ahead and be new up there. New Horizons. Ground control to Major Nuwa. If you buy her, of course, she's the third portion of our Odyssey. Aye. You get gifted the We Are the Ward Ward skin. All right, say ignition. Let's move along. Uh, let's have a little look <laughs> as well. We do really? have squad goals this weekend as well. Team up with at least one friend and play games together. You guys will earn double worshippers, double experience, and as well, double the FP. Well, to be fair, if you bet on the games today, you probably didn't earn many. <laughs> for sure. I mean, everybody just sort of thrown for a loop today. Squad goals can definitely help you out and figure that up. So again, one more time, I can't stress this enough. Please show up and take a look at Fnatic versus Paradigm. It's going to be our game of the week. On your left side, you take a look at Paradigm and that Fnatic record as well. Right. Fnatic is actually 17 and 7 there, so you can see how tight it is. 17 and 7 versus 18 and 6. If Fnatic can find two wins, they'll go above Paradigm. Paradigm can find two, and they should be looking to secure themselves that second spot. The all important buy in the Super Regionals. 1 p.m. right here on twitch.tv slash smite game to take a look at that match of the game. So, very important stuff. All in all, a very exciting Saturday here. We got thrown for a loop in North we America. Did. And honestly, it's my favorite kind of smite. Well, let's see if Sunday will be the same thing because that's where we're heading to next. All right, we'll catch you later. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>